So we all know that there's a lot of fun projects you can do with Raspberry Pis or Arduinos. You know, you can do powered control blinds, water meters, whatever you want. Well, lately I've been seeing some articles about uh, loading Windows 10 on top of this ARM processor of the Raspberry Pi 4. And it got me curious, can I do something feasible with this, make it a Windows 10 platform, maybe stick it behind a monitor and, you know, have a cheap console or terminal for the members of my family. So. Let's give it a go. So installing Windows on Raspberry Pi was actually a fairly painless process. Uh, essentially you download some of the executables that help load the actual OS on top of your Raspberry Pi. Um, have to grab the image from the uh, uh, Windows on Raspberry Discord channel. And there is a memory fix to have more than one gig available. Otherwise you'll have, um, well, the singular gig. Uh, it does allow up to three beyond that. Since it's x86, it doesn't handle it well. So no matter if you have the four or the eight gig Raspberry Pi, it's not gonna make a difference. You're gonna have three at least available at this time. Startup on first boot was mostly a slow process. It did seem to hang for a while. If you do not apply one of the patches, I had found that your USB ports, the uh, four in the front, do not work. I hear that you can use a USB-C uh, adapter and actually uh, extend your USB ports that way, and that did used to work. But there is a patch that fixes the four ports in front, which is fantastic. Uh, that way I can connect my keyboard and my mouse. There's also no native uh, network card support at the moment, so uh, using a USB network device such as the one I've put in the chat below that got me online. Once you finally get past the little Windows logo, you do get the standard install or startup. Uh, I believe this is standard now. It's been so long since I've done a Windows 10 desktop manually. I know they used to have like the little like let's test colors and all that crap. That isn't here anymore. You just have the language selector, um, what you want recorded, you create your account, and then you're on your way. So when you finally get to the desktop, uh, you do have a couple icons here, like a README. There's a, some registry setting. Uh, there's most importantly the installer for Microsoft Edge. It does not come pre-installed. Uh, I did run Edge. Everything seemed to load fine. Uh, they, I mean, overall the experience was slow. I did see some notes about 0 0.2, 0 0.4 being slower just because of added uh, compatibilities. But I noticed that, for example, YouTube wouldn't actually execute or play the videos when I navigated there. I couldn't ever get audio to work. So whether through the audio jack or through a USB dongle, I wasn't able to actually feed audio to something. But I didn't try Bluetooth audio, which I heard might also work with a Bluetooth dongle. So you can see here, I'm just confirming there's resources. Hey, there's my three gigs of RAM, uh, what my CPU looks like, my ethernet consumption. Uh, and then I actually attempt to, you know, check, can I p potentially play a, I don't even know what this is, uh, some legacy Oregon trail game uh, hosted by some DOS website. Can I get any YouTube videos to play? And you can see it starts to, and then just seizes. I think that's an issue specific to 0.2.4. Uh, I've seen reports where others have been able to get YouTube to play, but they were on earlier versions. So I figured to make this an actual, like semi-occasional use system, I would have to be able to install some applications, run some things, especially if I'm gonna hand it off to a kid to use uh, in their free time. So I thought, why not? Let's load up Steam, let's load up Left 4 Dead, see if that launched. It actually installed. I had a lot of problems though, where if I exceeded five megabit downloads, um, that it would lock up the OS and I would have to hard boot. I did end up just capping my Steam downloads to five megabit. 
it actually fix my issue there. I don't know if it's just, you know, write speeds to the SD card that I've loaded this on. I didn't use an external drive or if it's, you know, things with the USB driver or the OS itself, but kind of found that sweet spot of the maximum. Once I did finally get Left 4 Dead to download, it couldn't ever get it to execute. So I actually tried Castle Crashers. I figured it was a super small game. I mean, it's like 200 meg or less. And uh, Castle Crashers actually brought a unique thing to the forefront, which was I actually had to download uh, .NET packages. And I thought for sure this would be the thing that broke the Windows 10 on Pi. And in fact, they installed just fine. The only issue I ran into was Castle Crashers itself ran at maybe a frame per second and I couldn't actually execute to get past the the main menu. It was really hard to try and get the Steam overlay to appear over it. Uh, and it I just ended up having to alt tab out to just shut the application down. So at this point, you know, I, I've installed some x86 apps. I installed things into Windows, you know, .NET code, and that seemed to work fine or at least be recognized. So I installed Chrome, figured, you know, there was Edge there. Maybe there was something special done to Edge to get it to work. Chrome installed just fine. Launched, it is slower. I mean, Chrome is going to grab pretty much any RAM you have. Three gigs on Windows 10 is still going to act like three gigs with Windows 10. And, you know, when, while I'm in Chrome, I attempted again, let's see if I could get YouTube to work. Maybe it was something specific to Edge that wasn't allowing that playback. As you can see here, there is no Mr. Beast for me today. It just froze after the first frame. Same thing I saw with Edge. Still think it's an issue with .2.4, but it was super cool that I was able to get Chrome going. And for the most part, it, I mean, functions as a web browser should function in an OS, just slower. So while this is super cool, I'll probably still end up formatting my SD card and using the Raspberry Pi for something it was more or less meant for. Not being able to tap into the 8 gigs of RAM is definitely disappointing. The performance, the speed was disappointing from the aspect I thought I could make a mini computer and get by with the cheap. Here kid, have some Facebook, that's it. Definitely not the case in its current stage. With that said, it is super impressive that they were able to get Windows 10 to run on a Raspberry Pi and there seems to be a ton of effort being put towards it and kudos to that entire team because this would not be something I would even think of taking on and to get it down to the footprint that it was as well. I mean, I think it was a three gig installer is incredible. Hope to see some cool things come out of, the, out of that project. Still not ready for the limelight anywhere, even on like a little kiosk, but I think it's definitely getting closer. Uh, more of the features were enabled natively on the board. So as they can tap into that, you know, the USB ports, if they can get the native networking uh, adapter going, I think you're going to start seeing some more and quicker improvements. So I'm Chris from Code the Things. I mean, let me know if you had any better successes with the Windows 10 on Raspberry Pi. I'm really curious if it is just the .2.4 and not something that I overlooked. Um, that or, I mean, just heck, drop a line on what you're looking to do with your Raspberry. Maybe it's not Windows on it. Maybe you're doing something cool and I would definitely love to check it out. So click subscribe, leave a comment, and I will catch you next time.